America is not a racist country. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, we have three black men that were jailed for decades for a crime they never committed. This is in New York. So they were put in jail over the killing of a New York City subway clerk. And you can see him in the middle. So after decades in prison, three men were cleared Friday in one of the most horrifying crimes in New York's violence. Um, and this happened in the 90s, the killing of a clerk. This was uh, one of those subway transit clerks and they were set on fire in a subway booth, but these men were not the ones that did it. So a judge finally dismissed the murder convictions of Vincent Ellerby, James Iron, and Thomas Malik after a Brooklyn district attorney, Eric Gonzalez, cited serious problems with the evidence on which these convictions are based. He pointed to doubts about the men's confession and problems with witness identification. The three confessed, of course, they were coerced into confessing. And a lot of times, y'all, they are tortured into confessing and they were convicted of murder murdering a token seller harry kaufman and this happened in 1995 the case resounded from new york to washington to hollywood after parallels were drawn between the deadly arson and a scene in a movie money train So after years long of a reinvestigation into the case, it leaves us unable to stand by the convictions. This is according to Brooklyn District Attorney Eric Gonzalez said in a release, he cited serious problems with the evidence that was collected and he acknowledged the harm that has been done by these men in the system. So yes, the system once again failed, but a lot of these convictions and placing black men in jail are deliberate. They want them in jail, the same ones that were enslaved in the country to always be the ones behind bars doing the prison work. So the, these acts are deliberate. You wouldn't see so much of it if these were just mistakes well these exonerations are very common if they were mistakes then they would be uncommon and that's not what we see it, they're very common so these are deliberate acts the confessions conflicted with evidence at the scene and with each other the witness identifications were problematic Prosecutors say some of the men have long said they were coerced into falsely confessing in the case, which had a lead detective who later was repeatedly accused of forcing confessions and framing suspects. So you see two people in the picture that were convicted, and that's because the third suspect was already paroled back in 2020. That's why you don't see him. You see the two that have remained in prison, and that's Malik and Irons. And both of these men are 45, and they have remained in prison. Malik was still getting his head around the long-awaited news Friday morning that prosecutors were reconsidering the case. This is according to his lawyer, Ronald Cubby. Yesterday was the first day he was actually allowed 
to believe that he was going to be free, according to um, Ellerbee's attorney. Um, actually, this is Malik, but Malik is using Ellerbee's attorney, and he was paroled back in 2020. So he's using the same attorney and said later that he was extraordinarily happy to see his conviction thrown out. Kaufman was working uh, an overnight shift at a Brooklyn sub uh, subway station, and this was November 26, 1995, when attackers first tried to rob him, then squirted gasoline onto the booth and ignited it with a match while he pleaded, uh, don't light it. Authorities said at the time, the booth, of course, exploded and the 50 year old man ran from it in flames the married father died two weeks later the attack bore some resemblance to the scene in a money train an action in the movie that had been released four days earlier then senate majority leader and republican presidential hopeful rob dole oh oh yeah bob dole i remember when he was running uh, took to the Senate floor, took to the Senate floor for a boycott of the movie. Authorities gave mixed signals over the years about whether they believed the film had inspired the killing. The police scoured for suspects and eventually came to question Irons, uh, getting a confession that he was acting as a lookout. He implicated Malik and Ellaby as the men who had torched the booth. From their arrests, Ellaby and Malik maintained that they were coerced into false confessions, with Malik saying that Detective Louis Scarcella, and I did a video on the Scarcella before it was another exoneration of a different black man and a different crime. And he also framed that man and sent him to jail for something he never did. Had screamed at him and slammed his head into a locker. So they tortured these guys. That's why they got the fake confession. Scarcella testified that he cursed and pounded a table and was trying to scare 18 year old Malik but did not beat him. But that's not the story Malik has given. Malik said he did physically harm him. Gonzalez's office said its review found that Scarcella and his partners fed important details about the crime scene uh, to Irons, uh, details that the prosecutors later used at trial to argue that his confession was so specific that it had to be true. But it included, uh, clearly it was a dubious claim. For instance, he said that he had been able to see his purpose, uh, compliances jump. Okay, so they, they just, they slammed his head into a locker okay, and, and made all kinds of threats on him, you know, and this is what they did. And you know what the sad part, y'all, Scarcella, this corrupt detective, was allowed to retire. And he's getting his full pension. And they said he did this, if not to thousands of convictions. They had to overturn so many convictions in New York that this particular detective had handled. He should be in jail for putting this amount of innocent people in jail. They said there are so many cases that they still have to review and more than likely will be overturned. He was just putting them in there and didn't care who it was and pinning, I guess, any unsolved crime they could not figure out. They would just randomly pull someone off the street and throw 
uh, you know, crimes on them. But he primarily did this, y'all, and nobody's going to be shocked to black men. That's who he primarily did this to. So Scarcella retired in 2000. He has denied any wrongdoing. They should, uh, Scarcella should not be retired. He should be in jail. Okay, so dozens of convictions uh, since his retirement have been overturned. Prosecutors uh, have stood by scores of others. Brooklyn prosecutors uh, re-examine old convictions is widely viewed as one of the most, uh, you know, serious kind of, you know, just putting these innocent men in jail is a crime in itself. And it, it's saying that many of these prosecutors and people that were part of the courts, judges and everything, they're pissed off at what Scarcella has done. But, you know, they I guess they don't want to do nothing to him because, in my opinion, if you really wanted to do something, you could still arrest Scarcella for wrongly convicting all of these black men. You know, but we know how it is. He retired in 2000. Oh, you know, it, it, it's amazing how they will be very selective about when to enforce the law and when not to enforce the law. And they are really choosing in these instances not to enforce the law. Scarcella should not be free at all. So I'm glad these guys are free, but these three are far from the only ones. I'm convinced the majority of the prison population in America are innocent people. And I can say that based on exonerations happening so frequently. I am convinced the crime is exaggerated because America makes a lot of money off of crime. They do. They make tons of money off of crime. So in order to keep the money flowing, you're going to falsify a lot of those crimes just for the sake of money. So, hey, y'all have to tell me what you think. Um, I'm glad these guys are being released, but I'm not happy that the detective that's responsible for this still remains free. Please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell, and I'll see you on the next video. Peace, family.